What's up, everybody? It's Tyler here from Second Glass. This week on Wine of the Weekend, we're doing Pinot Noir. All right, so Pinot Noir. It's one of those grapes that everyone's like, oh my God, I love Pinot Noir. So you see it on every single wine list. Now there's huge Pinot sections. It's a grape. It's light, it's delicate, and it's actually incredibly difficult to grow. What does that mean? It means that it's really expensive. So finding a Pinot Noir under $20 that's actually really good is incredibly difficult. The grape is temperamental. It's very picky about the weather. If it gets too much water, it doesn't like it. If it doesn't get enough water, it doesn't like it. If it's too much sun, not enough sun. The wines in California tend to be, you know, kind of like big and bold. In a lot of cases, they mix them with Syrah, the cheap ones, to kind of flush them out and like get the flabbiness out of it. So Pinot Noir is one of the very few grapes you never blend it. You don't want to add any other grape to it because it is the lightest and one of the most delicate grapes out there. So whatever you add to it, the wine's just gonna taste like whatever that is you add. So it's like getting a Johnny Walker and Coke. Like why did you pay the money for Johnny Walker when you're just gonna add Coke and now it's just gonna taste like Coke, right? If you're gonna spend the extra money on flavor, you wanna taste that flavor. So we picked five different Pinot Noirs from different parts of the world to kind of illustrate what the differences are. Action Pinot First up, you gotta talk about Burgundy, France, right? This is where Pinot Noir comes from. Really quick, Burgundy's easy to understand at first. If it's white wine from Burgundy, it's Chardonnay. If it's red wine from Burgundy, it's Pinot Noir. After that, it gets horribly, horribly confusing, so let's just leave it at that for this video. Burgundy is not cheap. The prices have been going through the roof lately. You can blame the Chinese market. Romani Conti is the most expensive bottle of wine in the world. They want 10 grand a bottle for it right now. Ridiculous. I've always joked that when I make my first million, I'll drink Bordeaux, still not drinking Bordeaux. When I make my second million or fifth million, then I'll start drinking Burgundy. It's just really expensive. So this means you're starting at 20 bucks, but you're really in the 25 to $50 range to find some decent wine. We chose the Joseph Dahin Cote Nuit Village. It's about 28 bucks, maybe $30. And this is everything that you get in Burgundy. It's like super light, it's a little funky, it has this like acidity to it. It's not like the California Pinot Noirs that you taste, it's, it's very different, but this is the original. This is where it comes from, and this is kind of what the benchmark is for like great Pinot Noir, even though some people make it in a very different style. Have it with chicken, you can have it with pork, you know, it's Burgundy, it's like the middle of France. like they just have all kinds of meat with it. And cheese, lots of cheese. Next up, we're going to kind of the new hot place for Pinot Noir, which is New Zealand. New Zealand is a cool climate, so it's actually very similar to the climate in Burgundy, where it's kind of cloudy, it doesn't get too hot, it doesn't get too cold, it rains just enough, it doesn't rain too much, it doesn't snow in the winter, but it doesn't get too hot in the summer. That's the kind of climate that makes for really terrific Pinot Noir. We've chosen the Dashwood Pinot Noir, which is only 15 bucks, which is kind of a steal. Try this one. It has a little bit more body and it's got a little bit more fruit to it than typical cool climate Pinot Noirs. It's a great bottle of wine though, and it'll kind of show you what New Zealand can offer. Next up, we're going to another cool climate, Oregon. Oregon's really interesting because the Willamette Valley is exactly halfway between the equator and the North Pole. It's called the 45th parallel. 45th parallel runs right through the Willamette Valley. It also goes right through Burgundy. The climates are almost identical. Oregon Pinots, not super cheap either, but when you compare it to Burgundy, they're really like half the price for the quality. We've chosen one of the oldest and most prominent wineries in Oregon. This is the Willamette Valley Vineyards whole cluster Pinot Noir. Retails for about $20 to $25. Fantastic bottle of Oregon Pinot. And this will really kind of show you what Oregon's all about. Next up, we're going to California and finding affordable Pinot Noir that isn't mixed with Syrah or something else to kind of give it more body in California is pretty difficult. I would say like anything under $20 is hit or miss. Except these guys, they've consistently been making great Pinot Noir for years. Florida, California Pinot Noir from Carneros. Carneros and the Russian River Valley are the two places you want to look for Pinot in California. I mean, other people make great Pinot in other places too, but these are kind of the most popular places. Why? Because they're both fairly cool climate compared to their neighbor. Carneros is on the San Francisco Bay, and so it gets all that like clouds and coolness that comes in. And Russian River Valley is northwest of Napa. So at night, the cool breeze and the fog comes in down the Russian River Valley and cools off the grapevines from the, the hot sun during the day. And you get really great wines. It's 15 bucks and has those light yet fruity flavors that you're looking for in Pinot Noir. 
I mean, you really can't find a better California Pinot Noir for the money. Last up, Chile has been making some really, really great Pinot Noirs lately. And again, as you would guess, not terribly expensive. We're going with the Ritual Pinot Noir. It's $18 and it has all those flavors you want in a really great kind of like warmer climate Pinot Noir. So Chile has a very similar climate to Southern California. It's almost identical. And so you can get some really great wines. I like think Santa Barbara-ish, and that's another great place for Pinot Noir, only like they're kind of expensive. So in Chile, you don't have the whole name brand recognition, and you also don't have the property taxes that you have in California. And so what you get is you get a really high quality Pinot Noir for not a ton of money. There's all kinds of other wines. Pinot Noir. You got all different kinds, and that's our zero. If you're into Pinot Noir, you gotta try Pinots from all over the globe. We named five, but there's a lot of other places making great Pinot. Like we had one from Tasmania, there's great Pinot in Italy. Give it a shot, try something new, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Cheers.